day, another celebrity falling prey to the mainstream caricature of Islam. Famous actor and comedian Steve Harvey recently took a trip to the UAE, where he had a number of things to say regarding topics such as faith, whether or not there's only one way to God, as well as whether or not Islam is a religion of peace. Now, my mom was the one who sent me this video, and when I watched it myself, I knew it would make a great video on my end. And so, he explains it a lot better than I do, but let's go ahead and get into it. Today, I want to tell you about a guy. You may know him for his comedy. You may know him for his mustache. But today, I want you to know him for his religion. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey, stand-up comedian, entertainer, television host, family man. But most importantly, I happen to be a man of faith. Steve is a very successful guy. He has made more money than he ever thought. He has become more famous than he ever thought. But at the same time, he managed to keep his relationship with God closer than ever. Why did you not lose faith as you became more successful? If I could make myself successful, I would have done it a long time ago. <laughs> I would have skipped so many of the lessons I had to learn. But it's not that, it's a process. Success and happiness is a process, man. And in this process, I was very aware of the amount of faith that was needed. And as a matter of fact, it really took more faith than I even thought I had. So right off the bat, we can already sense extreme undertones of the prosperity gospel here. Rather than God being one you submit to and follow regardless of your circumstances, the way Steve Harvey seems to characterize him here makes him out to be this divine butler who, if we just simply have enough faith, will give us whatever we want. The only problem with that is that not only is it unbiblical, but it has no bearing within the testimony of centuries of Christian martyrs, both during the first century up until today even. I just did the video about uh, Christian persecution all over the world now in 2021, and the testimony still stands. People are dying for their faith, and his message about material wealth and success if you just have more faith really means nothing to people in Sudan or Syria who are fighting for their lives every day just to worship. And I thank God it's not biblical either. And so, again, I mean, we're just barely starting off here, but he's really not off to a very good one. See, oftentimes, people who are religious think their religion is right and everybody else is wrong. There is only one way to God. But Steve's faith is unique because it's really not about that. There's no one, one way to heaven, no one way to paradise. It's like television. Now it's over 800 channels of cable and they're all pretty entertaining. So I'm pretty sure, man, that to get to heaven, there's got to be more than one route. And cause somebody watching another channel or taking another channel than you, they still getting entertained and they probably still getting to heaven. I think it's incredibly dangerous to base one's eternity on a television analogy because the logic here simply just, it, it falls flat. According to Steve's analogy, every worldview, every ideology is more or less like a channel. And these channels, well, again, they'll more or less accomplish the same thing. The only difference is which one you prefer. But the problem with this is that according to his analogy, all these channels are the same when in reality, many of them have inherent contradictions with each other. If I watch the Mormon channel and they tell me that they are the only way to get to God, then me even considering other channels is something that will already put me in its crosshairs. Now, obviously Steve could say that he believes the Mormon channel's wrong about being the only way, but if he wants to deny its claim to being the way, how can we even trust it's a way? What becomes the grounds then if he already has thrown out one of his core beliefs? If he's thrown out one of his core beliefs, then how is this worldview now validated? Is it through his personal opinion, his personal preference? Does he just pick and choose as he goes along on what he does like and what he doesn't like? Well, if that's the case and the man determines whether or not a worldview is valid, then what's to stop a man who likes killing infants who believes it'll get him closer to God? Who are we to say that that man is wrong? What if a man has sex with a prepubescent nine-year-old girl? Would he be wrong? And if so, how could we tell him that? After all, he's the one that determines whether or not this worldview is viable, whether or not this worldview is a way to God. And by Steve Harvey's definition, he's in his perfect and full, complete responsibility to do that. Moreover, 
Wouldn't a man's one way of seeing the world through that one lens make him just as guilty as those who claim to have exclusivity, such as the Christian, the Muslim, or the Jew? After all, if in his worldview there's only room for claims to how he sees the world, then it seems as if his worldview is becoming the very thing he's been trying to avoid. Finally, I think the channel analogy is grossly simplistic. I was actually just watching a video this morning from Mike Winger, and he said it best, I think, in a way that really helps to understand what exactly goes on when one co-signs themselves to a worldview or not. So it, religion, our, our whole idea of picking religion is about a relational decision to accept or reject the God of creation. Yeah. And when you view it in that light and you go, oh, hold on, I'm not just picking a religion. I'm, I'm choosing to em embrace and worship and love the God of creation or to create idols and worship false images and, and reject him. Yeah. Okay. So then picking religion takes on a whole different connotation. I think the theme we're getting in these questions is let's just dumb everything down as much as possible so we can create caricatures and misrepresentations of things. Yeah. These are, these are just talking points. Mm -hmm. They're just like empty talking points. Yeah. And I, I feel like in discussion with the progressive Christian, you're going to constantly find yourself having to say, but wait, but I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm not saying, I hear you, but I feel like you don't hear me. And that, that's what this feels like. Yeah. All right, and let's keep going. This isn't just talk. Steve lives by these words. He has three sons, two of them. He gave them Christian names like Broderick, and one of them he gave a Muslim name, Ali as a sign of respect and appreciation for the Muslim religion and the Muslim culture. I named him Ali because I knew, I knew then. That he I might knew, be different. I knew. And you have no problems with it? No. Because when you come here, you understand Islam is a religion of peace. Why you got a problem with peace? All right, it's obvious that Steve has not studied Islam's most trusted sources, and I myself am almost even getting sick of going through these. But for the sake of potentially new viewers, we'll just go through a few just so we can see what exactly Islam teaches regarding those of different faiths, regarding unbelievers. Fight those who do not believe in Allah, nor in the latter day, nor do they prohibit what Allah and his messenger have prohibited, nor follow the religion of truth. And when the sacred months have passed, then kill the polytheists wherever you find them, and capture them and besiege them, and sit and wait for them at every place of ambush. O oh, Prophet, Strive hard against the unbelievers and the hypocrites and be unyielding to them, and their abode is hell, and evil is their destination. Muhammad had nowhere near the same level of respect for Christians that Steve does for Muslims. His final marching orders were to subjugate the entire planet, which is exactly why we see so much jihad against unbelievers even in the world today. I'm sure the Muslims he meets are amazing, and I'm sure the mosques themselves are beautiful, but this doesn't change the fact that this ideology itself at its very core is one that is void of the same respect for other religions that Steve himself champions. Again, my issue is not with the Muslims here who are choosing to show a sign of solidarity. My issue is with the ideology which actually commands the opposite of these things. In and of itself, it's a great gesture, but I wouldn't call it Islamic. The reality is that groups like ISIS would kill these Muslims for showing this sign of solidarity, as per Surah 973. They see them as hypocrites because they claim to be Muslim and yet accommodate these unbelievers. I have no problem with it. I'm just simply pointing out what the sources say. It's just a name, but it's a big step to showing respect to people of other cultures. What Steve did reminds me a lot of this mosque. This mosque in Abu Dhabi belongs to people in the Islamic faith. But as a sign of tolerance to the churches next to them, they renamed the mosque to Mary, Mother of Jesus Mosque. Can you imagine a mosque with the name Jesus on it? Yeah, the world could use a little bit more of that. At a time when religious intolerance is on the rise, we need many, many more of these mosques, many, many more of people like Steve. After hanging out with Steve for a week and visiting mosques, churches, and museums in the Emirates, I am convinced religious harmony, religious respect, religious tolerance is the most important thing. And we need to promote that every single day. I completely agree. Religious tolerance is incredibly important. 
But ironically, this ideology that Steve has co-signed himself to has been one of the worst perpetrators of religious intolerance in the history of mankind. Not to mention that Muhammad bought, sold, owned, and traded black African slaves. I honestly do believe that Steve is sincere here, but one can be sincere and still be wrong. Religious tolerance is most definitely a world that we should strive for, but as long as we keep ignoring the truth about ideologies and what makes them dangerous and immoral, the closest we'll ever be able to get is La La Land. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Be sure to like it, share it, let me know what you think down below because this is a very important topic that really needs more light shed on it. And I think if people aren't talking about these things, we'll fall into this deception regarding religion, regarding truth. And so, like I said, let me know what you think. I'll be checking out the comments, but until then, stay tuned for more. Thank you.